Howdy, I'm Gerard Johnson, and this is your Monday Morning Quarterback. Fourth down. As we move into this week's opponent, South Carolina State, I would love to see our coaches put our players in some uncomfortable situations. As we move forward in the SEC schedule after this game, there's going to be times where our defense needs to put seven, eight, almost nine guys in the box to stop the run. As a result, it's going to put a lot of pressure on our corners to make plays one-on-one. -on -one. I would love to see our coaches stack the box this week and put some pressure on our corners so they can have success in dealing with that pressure. And seeing these young corners on an island having to fend for themselves, I really think will be great for not only their confidence, but great for this defense. If we can put that many guys in the box and trust these young guys on the outside, we will have success at the defense in the SEC. I'm Gerard Johnson, and this has been your Monday Morning Quarterback. Started. The first thing I want to notice or to show is his defensive end. He thinks the AM's running option, and we fake the option, then Johnny drops back. The beauty of this is he has now eliminated himself from being a pass rusher because he's running laterally instead of going upfield, creating more time for Johnny to throw the ball. The next thing I want to show is this safety and how out of position he is. As you can see, his hips are facing the wrong way. So his body and shoulders facing the sideline, if Kendrick McNeil can find a way to get inside of him, there's no way he can cover him. Now, the most important person in this play is Ryan Swope. His whole job is to do two things, to, to make sure that his man chases him and also to occupy two guys. And the two guys he wants to occupy is his man chasing and then there's a safety back here that he needs to occupy. And we like to call that taking two. So, as we go on, you see here, Ryan Swope has now taken two defenders. There's one, two guys for Alabama, and our one guy. And then what you also notice is the clear picture. You can see all the space that Johnny Football has to throw this pass. And you can also see that Kenny McNeil has beat his defensive back inside. And if you go back to the last play, you can see right here that his hips are in a bad position. If he gets beat inside, he's thinking that I have a safety help over the top. Well, now that Ryan Swope has taken his safety over the top, he now no longer has help, which gives the space for Johnny to throw the ball. And as, the re as a result, we have a big play. Manziel fakes the option, pulls up, drills a deep man open, diving catch. At the same time, what Kyler brings to the table in this specific system, in living in Texas, playing the style of ball fits so well, too. It's going to be very interesting dynamic. And so you can't worry about the other guy. That's the one thing, no matter if you're in a quarter, any type of competition, kids out there listening, you cannot worry about things you can't control. You worry about the time you get in. If you start counting throws, well, he completed one, I complete one, whatever, <laughs> you're, it's done. You have confidence what you bring to the table, how you play the game, and you go and do it how you do it. Neither they're going to like it or they're not. And that's ha how you have to approach it. And hopefully they like what you bring to the table more than the other guy. Because sometimes both guys can play really well and be do things really well different ways. And the coaches are ultimately going to pick which style they want better. And that doesn't always mean one guy's better than the other one. It's just this fits this style more. So if you like the, you know what, say they play flat out even. But Kyle's been there. The guys know him. He's battle tested. You know, I'm going to go with my older guy. You know, yep. say it's Kyle does great, but Kyler has the ability to take off and pop off a 65-yard run. It's kind of like, yeah, Kyle, there's nothing you did wrong, but we want to have that quarterback run element into our game on a more consistent basis. So, and it just it is what it is. I mean, this the quarterback position is the ultimate position of preference. You look at the NFL, you look at it's preference. You can see, like even at the league eleven thing, you have thirty of the top quarterbacks there, and everybody have a different favorite. Oh no, no you question. know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah. it's such when you get to that level of of, of talented guys, it's all, it's all a matter of preference. It's going to be interesting to see kind of the identity this offense takes this year. Yeah, it's it's a juicy matchup. Yeah, uh, AP in the social center. There's a little text message of encouragement to JJ. You always have these when you stop in, Gerard, and I think it means more when people talk about the guy you are than the player you were or are. I think it's always cool. Alex, what did they say? Yeah, they said, Jared, you're the epitome of class. As, as such a high-caliber athlete, you never seem to be above anyone, and that means a lot. 
Oh, well, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. My mom would be very happy to hear that. That's right. <laughs> All right, Gerard, you're back with us on the Byers Barricades Hotline. Let's see what you got. Set, reset for us Lamar Jackson one more time. Yeah, so I, I think that if this was 10, 15 years ago, there may be some truth to some of the knocks on Lamar. But the fact that matters, the game has changed, you know, and, and the fact you, you need playmakers. And he's one of the most dynamic athletes and playmakers in, in college football. And I think that he throws the ball well enough and, and he does a lot of things. And I don't think his athleticism should be held against him. I think he can play quarterback in the NFL. I think he should get an, an opportunity to do so. And But once again, when you're picking these young quarterbacks and expecting them to play, make sure the franchise has a plan in place for their success. Mm -hmm. If you have a coach who doesn't want them and, and or a system he doesn't want to run with them, don't draft them and try to fit a square peg into a round hole. So I think all these guys' success is going to be more about the, the nurture or kind of how they're developed and the environment around them to develop them than it is their individual ability because I think all of them are good enough to play. Now, Josh Rosen, you, well, first of all, let me set it up. Drod, you've been poked and prodded. You've been through this. Uh, you know, this process and people looking at everything in your past and your future and, uh, oh, you know, uh, is he all about football or is he too diverse? Uh, I got a feeling that Josh Rosen is going to be a really, really good quarterback. Why are they just picking his, the fact that he's a, a whole person and has opinions, why are they picking that apart? Uh, I, I think it's just one of those things. Sometimes I think there's something about being in the limelight for so long. People know everything about you. I mean, he's been a starter since he's a freshman. So people, and he's in L.A. And so there's a lot of football people and media people that are in L.A. So people know his personality. They have a cousin or a friend who has a story about him. I mean, all kinds of things. Because I think he's been in the spotlight so long. And I like Josh. I've been around him a little bit through the Elite 11 stuff in L.A. And, and he's an eccentric person. You know, I think that most quarterbacks have some eccentric quality in them. Anybody does. You know, he's unapologetic about what he says. He is who he is. But I, mean, I think, once again, I think he's ready to play right now, given – how he was developed playing in a pro style system. So, but once again, I mean, all to come down to, to the franchise that's drafting him and you understand what you're getting yourself into. If you're trying to draft him and all of a sudden try to make him be quiet or not be vocal or not understand his personality, then don't draft him, you know. But I, I'm really high on him. I think he has a, a really good skill set. And I think he's, between him and Darnold, I think they're the, the two that could step in day one and at least get you through a game to understanding how to play the pro style game.